Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We have the one and only Brian Falconer here in the studio, <laughs> the Cigar Talk co-host. How are you doing, Brian? Man, I'm doing good. Doing good. Nice, man. So it's <clears throat> been a little... I, I haven't seen you since last week when we recorded. Yeah, that's true. So what have you been up to, man? Work. Well, I know last weekend, though... You took your you, yeah, yeah. You took your wife down Ten to years. Arlington. Yes, sir. Yeah, went out to some fancy places to eat. Yeah, fuck Kobe. Huh? I'm not saying. Oh, fuck Kobe. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fuck. Fuck Kobe. Yeah. P H O is fuck. Have you seen? That? They have some of those that are like the faux king. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to faux king. Yeah, it's really. King. Fuh, yeah, yeah, I got you. So, how was that? That was great, man. Kobe, yeah. the Kobe beef. Kobe beef. How was that? I've never had it. It's great, man. It's expensive, but it's great. But I mean, can you definitely tell a difference? Oh hell, oh, heck yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to remember which show we were. On. Yeah, we're on the regular yeah. show. Oh heck yeah. So I've never had it. I I would like to, but you know, I will say this: the best steak I've ever had was the dry age steak Sean. that Sean brought yeah, us. Yeah, that was yeah. the top tier. I mean, you know, because, you know, I'm just a poor old white boy. <laughs> you know. Dude, I mean, you are not. Uh, <laughs> now, you may have grown up that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's not you anymore. Well. You're, you're not extravagant. No, you're no, just, you're just, you're just blue I collar. I smoke a lot of yeah, cigars. Blue collar. I could probably be more well off if you if, left. <laughs> if, if I was not a cigar smoker. If you smoked, no, if you were not the cigar smoker that yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm going to tell you a little secret, though. What is that? Today at 3 o'clock. 1500 or zero three? 1500. Okay. I had only smoked one cigar today. How? Because I worked my butt off in the yard. I just was like, Miss B had to have you handcuffed some Dude, kind of it was crazy. In fact, at like 2 30, I told my wife, I was like, You realize I've only had one cigar today. I'm going to take a shower and then I'm going to go smoke a cigar. Yeah. So I actually, I probably started at about 2 30. Gotcha. I came out here. Flipped on the cowboy game, and because, you really needed a cow, yeah, a cigar and a drink. I, you know what? <laughs> and a therapist. I didn't even watch the rest of the game. I didn't even watch. I, I turned it on. They were down twenty, or they were down three to twenty-five, yeah. and then you I, saw the hit for the five ten minutes I watched. I was like, "This is like." If you're a Jets fan, oh, wow. a, a Cleveland Browns wow. fan, Detroit Lions, Detroit. Wow. Well, even though Detroit, Detroit came won, back and yeah, won today, Detroit did. so that was like too a, much time, dude. Atlanta, dude, and Gurley. He tried. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> he tried. Dude, come on. He tried. He, he really sh- did. He should have just went down yeah. in the line. He just tried. Yeah, but he he was still his momentum was still carrying him. He was trying to just he like he wanted his legs to just come from abundant, but they kept going. <laughs> and he was like, "Well, you know, it's hard to not do what you're oh, trained yeah. to do." Oh yeah. So I anyway, can say that. Anyway, enough about football. Well, well, how did you guys play today? Oh, not yet. Oh, when do y'all play? Tonight or yeah, tomorrow? Probably tonight or. We should. We don't worry about it. Who who are y'all playing? Do you know? We, we, we go, we're not playing the Cowboys, so we may have to fight to win. <laughs> it's not a gimme. Is that no, what you're saying? We're not playing the Cowboys, so if, it's not a gimme. If 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 you compare, are we playing uh, New England? Oh yeah, New oh, England. Oh. Yeah, this is uh, Garoppolo goes back to New England. That'll be a test. Yeah, that'll be a test. That'll yeah. be a good game because you know Belichick knows him, so you know he right. de- he's going to devise devise a defense to stop him. Yeah, because he knows everything about him. I mean he. Straight came out of uh, college right there yeah, it, and said, "How many years was he there? Six? Is if if that's on tonight, we should watch yeah, it. Yeah, because uh, that's gonna be that's gonna what, be something. What's, what's your curfew tonight? Uh, I'm not gonna be ignorant, but because <laughs> I was so I'm, it's I was gonna say, so I'm you'll grown, be home man. before no two. <laughs> so you'll yeah. be home before two. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's get on to our Patreons and. Tell everybody, you know, we're so thankful for our Patreons. They make this show possible. And we just want to say thank you, man. I mean, it's an honor to that we have the supporters that we have. And we do the pre-show yeah. for the Patreons yes. as our producer Luke is over there going, hey, don't forget the pre-show. We do a pre-show almost every week. But we when didn't he's do the here. One, yeah, we didn't do a pre-show the last two weeks because our producer, Luke Jones, had 
uh, no, he did not have COVID. He was exposed directly to COVID, uh-huh. and he was quarantined for 14 days. Yeah. And I tried to do the video. That, no, you, you, I, <laughs> that was a try. <laughs> Dude. I sat over there for. That I, was a try. I sat over there for an hour. And just destroyed stuff. <laughs> I, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Larry showed up and called him John Travolta, said he was the bubble boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The video part, yeah, I don't know how to do it. It's all Luke. We get it. Yes. So. Uh, we want to say thank you to the Patreons. We do the pre-show for them, mm-hmm. and we try to do a lot of other stuff for them, but they are the backbone of Cigar Talk. So we just want to say thank you to all you guys. Thank you. And in case you don't know, all of our episodes going forward mm-hmm. are also on YouTube. YouTube. So you'll be able to watch or listen or both. See, so I get a chance to listen and see the asshole and the knucklehead yeah so so if you're watching on youtube make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the mm, thumbs up button yes. make sure you hit the little ring a bell so you know when a new episode so comes out. out and uh, we're going to try to grow the youtube channel so mm-hmm. we need your help to do that Most definitely. uh even if you're not a big youtube guy you could yeah. go by and subscribe yeah. uh we're going to be doing on the future episodes we've got some new equipment ordered we yes. are actually going to put Thanks up to the Patreons again. the list of cigars during the show, so you can actually pull that up on yes. the YouTube channel, and you can see what we're smoking. And by the way, what we're smoking, let's talk about what you're smoking. That's a special stick. Yes, KC from uh, KC Leaf. Sunshine. <laughs> KC from the Leaf gave me a Tatoue RC Series 223. I think it's 223. Ooh. Nine and a half. Nice. So what are you drinking over there? Right now, I'm drinking some larceny. Larceny. So we got Big Larry in the studio. He's big hanging Larry. out, smoking yeah. cigars, and uh, cat calling in the yeah. background. Yeah. And so he brought some larceny, which was rated by was that wines list wine enthusiast, wine enthusiast wine as a top ten bourbon for under forty bucks. And he picked it up out at the military base for twenty six. Class six, baby. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you. It's really oh, good. Yes. I'm getting a lot that of cur- caramel, cur- getting some spices. Did, did you see that? He said caramel, and I was getting ready to say caramel. <laughs> what is the correct pronunciation of that word? You know what? Caramel. Ah, thank you. <laughs> but when I say caramel apples, you, you don't out say of- caramel yes, apples. You do? Yes, you do? do? Yeah, you straight out of Texas, bro. I am out of Texas. Yeah, straight out of Texas. It's ass, not But let ice. me tell you something. Right. Let me tell you something. Right. You know, I also lived in St. Louis. You visited. I did. And let me tell you something. And they knew where you were from. When I went up there. <laughs> the, this the, is the question I want to know. The ladies loved the Texas accent. Yeah, because it was different. It was way different. Way different. It was like. Dude, I dated, a, I dated a young girl while I was up there. And her mother was the vice president of Anheuser-Busch. Vice president. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know what her name was. I don't remember. But no, anyway, because, dude, we got box seats yeah, for the games. Everything. And, yeah. you know, the funny thing is we went to go to one of the games. And, like, in the fourth inning, she was like, all right, let's go. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> I'm here for the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love all these extras, but I'm here for the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, dude, in the ninth inning, uh-huh. it was tied. Bottom of the ninth. I don't remember who was up to bat, but there was somebody on third. There's two outs. He cracks a hit, and the bat breaks. The ball and half of the bat go spinning (laughs) at the pitcher. He dives out of the way of the broken bat, Uh and the guy runs home and wins the the game. game. And I was like, and you wanted to leave in the fourth? (laughs) Yeah, she, she wanted spoiled to girl, a, spoiled yeah, girl. Damage. Yeah, and you know what? That's why she was part of the Bush clan. We didn't, bro. we didn't, we didn't jive because yeah, they. Yeah. Hey, I remember going over to their house, and her younger brother, that was probably like thirteen or fourteen, had three Michael Jordan rookie cards. Yeah. My mother's friend was she was a doctor at one time, and she had let her practice go because she had got. You know, up in age, no, up in oh. age, but she was she was contracted to, to to be August Bush sister's caretaker. She was her nurse, and everywhere she went, Miss uh, Deb went. I mean, flew. They had a private helicopter just for them. They had a private plane just for them, 
everything that they did, it was like she had to go with her. So she she saw the world riding with this 90-year-old woman, making sure that she made it back home. Oh, that's cool. But she made over 200000 a year. Well, that's more than I make. Just for one for one patient. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you're really more of a helpmate. Yeah, you're everything for Yeah. Me. Everything for me. So, anyway, hey, let's get on to our sponsors. Most definitely. We have... I'm going to say right now, out of all the cigar shows out there, we have the best sponsors. I'm I'm 100% with you on that. We have McAuliffe. 100%, yes. Which ha- not only produces top quality cigars, but they support the industry. They support the brick and mortars. They take care of their ambassadors. They take care of the consumers. They listen to them. Yes. They inform them. Yes. Every And they're so transparent. Mm-hmm. Everything that they do is transparent. Yep. And so I can't wait to see where McAuliffe is even six months from now. I love it when we're on that uh, the Facebook page, the ambassador's page, and somebody says, oh, I can't find them here. And Dan asks, Immediately, Dan asked, where you at? Boom. Where you at? Well, hold on. Just wait. Yeah, we'll we'll start working on that. <laughs> hold on. Just wait. That's taking care of your consumer. Right. And they ditched yeah, Cigar International. Yeah, they did. In a great way. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of heard the backstory to that, and I was just like, that's putting your money where your mouth mm-hmm. is. That's not just talking the talk. That's walking the walk. And if you remember back in 1993, Jimmy Johnson said, <laughs> you know, go with another you, you know I got to come through with some glory. He said that <laughs> her jail was better than spray. <laughs> so, hey, hey, now I got to you got to give it to Jimmy Johnson. Dude had some hair. No, he had concrete up there. It's, oh. still, it's still in the same Dude, form. That's a great never foundation. Moved. He had the master mason do that. Never, never moved. <laughs> Today, when he's on television, you look at it, that hair is still the same. Yes, it hasn't hey, so moved. If you haven't become a McAuliffe ambassador, go by our webpage, yes. look down in the show notes, click on the link, go over, sign up to be an ambassador. They send you a coin, and you'll have your own personal number. Bryant's number came out before my number which is <laughs> ridiculous because I got my coin before he got his swag, baby. Swag. But they Bill White, for me. hey, but Bill White, yeah, number sixty-five. Bye. Bye. Number sixty-five. Bye. Bye. He cheated. He in New I York. I want to know he who something. I want to know. Had the mob I want to know. With somebody. I want to know somebody. <laughs> if you have an ambassador coin lower than sixty-five and you do not work for McCalla, yeah, email me. Yeah, you I want. I want to see that too. Yeah. So, I really want to see that. That would be awesome. Hey, so anyway, guys, our next sponsor that we love, I mean, talk Sir. about living the American dream. Club 500, you have Viva La Vida Cigars, mm. Artisanal Tobacco, mm. blended by A.J. Fernandez. You're talking about the American dream lived out by brothers who came to America, opened up a cigar shop, and then sold it. Because they wanted to dive in yes. to another part of the cigar industry, and they made an immaculate cigar. Most definitely. So hats off to them, and that's actually going to be our giveaway this week. Mm. So here's what we want to do, guys. We're going to get away from our regular giveaway this week, mm-hmm. and what we're going to do is if you're out there and you want to join in, we're going to give away a Cigar Talk Travel Humidor. It holds five cigars. It's and here. I'll show it on the here. You go. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's upside down. There you go. Right there. <laughs> and yes, sir. Oh, by me. There we go. Hey. Wow. So, anyway. <laughs> wow. That's travel. Like it's, hey, wow. it's like a carrot. It, no, you didn't look that way. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, we're giving away a Cigar Talk Travel Humidor. Uh, we've got a couple of our Cigars Talk. We have the old school sticker yes. and the new yes. sticker on it. It holds five cigars, and it's great for traveling. Most definitely. So anyway, what we want you to do is go to Instagram, post your pictures of photos of uh, Viva La Vida, and Something you have to, to tag it. Artisanal Tobacco and tag Cigar Talk Rob and Cigar Talk Bryant. Yes. And then we're going to randomly select photos, and then whoever the winner is, we're going to send them that travel humidor. Yeah, with a little, few extra little 
A little something, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah. as a good friend of mine, Jeff Richardson, uh-huh. always says, I'm going to send you a little something, something. something, something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not going to tell you what it is, mm, but, but it's, you're, you're going to be happy. You're going to be delighted. Mm-hmm. Delighted. So anyway, uh, blow blow up Instagram with Viva La Vida and Cigar Talk. Well, I'm glad you got to finish that sentence. Right? Blow, blow, B- blue, blow up. Boom, blow up, baby. <laughs> blow them up. Got the feds listening to us. So like, blow. Anyway. Are they blowing up? <laughs> so anyway, and then that brings us to our local hey, brick and mortar. Another American story. Dude. Yes. Dude. Well, you say an American story. We got a Hawaiian guy. Yes. <laughs> That's America. American. No, America. <laughs> so we have two of the greatest owners yes. of a cigar shop yes. here in Abilene, Texas. You have Corey, you have Jay, mm-hmm. and then you have the staff of Scott. And I heard soon Dwayne is coming back. Yes. Did you know that? I didn't, but I'm glad to, I'm I, glad to hear that, I can't that, wait to see yeah. Dwayne. Dwayne there. Dwayne <laughs> is like the Pop. pillar of the cigar community that we've been missing. Almost definitely. And don't get me wrong. Scott is a wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. But when you see Dwayne at the cigar shop, <laughs> you just feel like you're home. Almost oh, definitely. And he has a wealth of knowledge in more than one uh, avenue because me and him sitting back having those police talks. Yeah, because he's a former police yes, guy. and then he's a, a arms instructor. He's the guy at, uh, what's that, that uh, – a shooting range, you know, it's yeah. just he's he, he's he has his hands in a lot of things. cookie jars, yes, yeah, yes. And he, I mean, it's a wealth of knowledge. Just sit back and just listen. And I've That's heard that he's doing. doing really well. And he's yeah. he's I, I don't know how old Dwayne is, but he's a little bit older, gentleman. And we've heard he's had some health issues, but we hear that he's doing a lot better. So we're excited to get I'm him back to in the shop, back. yes, sir. And then let's talk about the shop, <laughs> dude. I mean, don't get me wrong. We all loved the, the old, old shop. Leaf, yeah. It was home. Nostalgia. It was comfortable. Yes. But the new level, in fact, me and Larry were sitting back in the back in the VIP lounge, and just the level of comfort, the space, oh, the yes. air purification, mm-hmm. it's like he's not kicked it up a notch. He's kicked it up about 10 notches. Yeah. It's to the 10th level, man. Everything about it, from the front room, the front to, room, the accessories, yeah. the cigars. Let's talk uh, about the humidor, dude. Humidor is, you walk the into the Taj Mahal. <laughs> I like that. You know what I mean? Because like you that. walk in, and first of all, yeah. it's completely lined in cedar. You open the, the door, entire room. You open the door, you hear angels. Oh, and mm-hmm. dove fly yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. It, it's something special. It is, man. <clears throat> And so we just want to say, if you haven't had the opportunity to go by the Leaf, it is at 1166 North 2nd Street. Yes, and go by, check it out. It's a great lounge. It's a great place to pick up cigars. And, you know, during this time of COVID, you know, they you do wear a mask when you mm-hmm. go in. And you wear a mask when you go in the humidor. That's correct. But then when you sit down and smoke, you take your mask off. Yeah. We social distance, and we just have a great fellowship oh, yes. with other cigar smokers. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's all about. And i tell you what, man. I didn't realize how I became so you know, lonely for the cigar community. You know what I mean? Because yeah, till you get back there, well, because the leaf had the clothes mm-hmm. except for curbside for a long time. Yes, what? Sir. Five months, yep. six months. And so now that it's open again, it's just like, Oh, it's a yeah, place. Was, it's a place of refuge. That was about March when they closed the doors. Cause they had to. So you're looking at now they just opened up and then it's just, <clears throat> It's the opportunity, as you said, to get back to that cigar community, man. You didn't know you missed it until it was gone. And then you get back, you're like, oh, this is what I was missing. Well, and you know, there's a lot of guys, well, you know, like you, Larry, Ed, uh-huh. Paul. I've hung out and smoked with you guys yes. throughout the five or six months. Yeah. But there's a lot of people at the shop that, that haven't I haven't seen, seen in five I, or six months. Yeah, I came and hung yeah. out with this last Saturday night. It was great. Uh, Alan, Alan Turner. Yeah. I mean, at, did you know Alan's working at the Leaf? No. Saturday night. Oh, my God. Right. Dude, we had a great time. Ah. You know, the Leaf, I don't know. I don't even know what time they close, but he let us stay in the VIP room pretty late. Mm, that is cool, man. <clears throat> I, that... <laughs> Alan's a great that's, person yeah, to have. That, that's, that, 
that's the community, man. Exactly. Ah, that's cool. I, I got to find myself up there on a Saturday night, man. Well, you're going to have to start coming Saturday mornings yeah, at 10. That was already sent out to me. Yes. That is that is spot on. I don't I don't remember. We, 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 six weeks? Seven weeks? We've been meeting probably six or seven weeks on Saturday mornings for coffee and mm-hmm. cigars. Uh-huh. And if you guys don't know, the Leaf has the best, best coffee, coffee on the planet. Yeah, In I got fact, me, I got another this pound week... Today. They've this last Saturday, mm-hmm. they had the regular coffee up front, which is what I drink. Yeah. But in the back, they had some decaf that, you know, Larry only yeah. drinks decaf because he's old <laughs> and he <laughs> loved it. I got you. I don't even remember what it's called. Do you remember? Vanilla bourbon. Vanilla bourbon. Mm. And the funny thing is, the guys who were drinking that were also pouring some bourbon, bourbon. in it. <laughs> in fact, it might have been just vanilla. Now. Scott, <laughs> Scott, and uh, Jay were actually having breakfast when I got there, and they were using a maple syrup bake, knob, knob Creek maple smoked bourbon as their beverage. S- no, as the syrup, as the syrup on the pancakes. Wow! And they told me it was phenomenal. Wow! I've never had that. Wow. I was kind of like. That takes me back to college. Just Captain Crunch and Budweiser. <laughs> now, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> Point, man. You see, got no milk. See, you got to eat it some kind hey, of way. <laughs> Knob Creek maple syrup bourbon <laughs> and pancake <laughs> sounds good. Way better than Budweiser and Captain, Captain Crunch. Crunch. <laughs> That makes me think hey, of man. whenever I was 19. I was a, I was a student athlete Ugh. in college. Yes, sir. 19 years old. I'm wow. Eat what I can. No, thank so, you. I Dude. was a ramen noodle connoisseur. <laughs> oh, I remember the ramen noodles. <laughs> Dude, Dude anyway. the ramen noodles. And then I would go to the grocery store when I was like 18 and uh-huh. I was moved out. And I would go to the grocery store and I would buy a sub sandwich about this big. They cut it in slices. And I would cut it into sections. four sections. Yeah. And that was lunch for four yes, days. Yes, and sir. it was only four dollars. Yes, sir. Could eat well. What I say about being a poor white boy? Hey. I was poor. <laughs> Man, I was poor. See, that's the difference. I was poor. You, you were poor. I was poor. You were poor. <laughs> I was poor. So I had to make do, man. So anyway, also if you look down in the show notes. You'll have the phone number to contact mm-hmm. the Leaf. If you need to order some McAuliffe cigars, you need to order some Viva La Vida cigars, mm-hmm. they will hook you up. Most definitely. They are stocked up. They even have the Club 500, or at least they did Saturday. Yeah, because I had a visit today. Did You didn't buy them all, did you? I didn't buy them all, okay. but I could have. And, you know, you have to be... You have to have a sharing mindset. You know, there are other people they may like, but let me go back in there Monday or Tuesday and they're still there. You don't have to worry then. I gave you an opportunity. You didn't take it? Sorry. Now now I don't feel bad. Nope. I, I gave you an opportunity. Right. You didn't get it. So sorry. So, all right. So let's get on with episode mm. 104. 104. So I know you've prepared some notes to go by. Yes, let's, let's go ahead and... Uh, as uh, Marvin Gaye says, let's get it let's on. Let's get it on. Start off with your pick six. Yeah, let's do it. Who's going first? I'll let you go first. As usual. Always. Uh, my number one was the Leva V Series Lancero. And guess who was smoking one today? I know, my son. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Luke Jones is over there smoking the Oliva V. Yes, sir. And he's smoking the Lancero. Lancero. Enjoying it. Because he's dainty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a great stick, man. Number two, La Gloria Cubana Series R. We know about that. A great stick. Uh, enjoyable from the first light all the way to you stick your poker in it, which Rob is sitting there looking like, ah, here we go with the poker again. But, man, this is just an enjoyable stick. I love it all the way through. Now, which one was that? Number two. No, what was the cigar? La Gloria Cubana Series R. I haven't had one of those in a long time. Mm-hmm. I prefer the N Series. N Series. That's a good stick, too. I, it's a little darker, Yeah, but both of them are good sticks. Gotcha. But go ahead. Last one, McAuliffe. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nice. Dude, I had two of them this week. You know, that was like, was, yeah, it has to make the list. That was in the list of the top ten for mm-hmm. under ten last week. That's a great stick. A great Larry, stick. have you been smoking any more of those? The uh, McAuliffe A? No, the question should be, Larry, have you bought any more to smoke? <laughs> because he smoked some, but they weren't bought they by came, him. They came out of your yes. humidor? <laughs> okay, fair enough. 
<laughs> All right, so I've got a list of boutique cigars that I've smoked. Okay, that you probably never heard of. Let's so go. the first, the first one out of the gate is from I, and I could mispronounce this because I've never heard the name of it, uh-huh. but it is Barretta Cigars, and it's the Habano Don Chico. Never heard of it. I posted a picture of it. Did you see that one? Yes. Anyway, huh. they sent me a pack of 10 cigars, and they were fantastic. You did, you get, the, did, you, did you hear? I just sit there and said, did you get he's going to ask, did I get? And I just said, I've never seen that before. <laughs> so how did I, how did I, how have I never seen it, and I got one? They sent a pack of 10, and you smoked all 10. 10? How many did you get? Luke didn't get any. How many did you get, Brian? None. <laughs> I might have smoked all of no, them. No, ain't no might. <laughs> There's no might in that at all. I think I that gave was a, that was a for sure statement. I'm pretty sure I gave one to Ed. So you said pretty sure. That still tells me that's a lie. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yes. So here's another cigar. Let's move on to number two. Yeah, we have to. Okay. So number two is the big sky. Did you see this yes, one? Yes, I've smoked that. You smoked that yes. one? Where'd you get that? It came in uh, one of those boxes I got. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. No, that was the blue one. No, I got a green one. Oh. I don't know which box it came in, okay. but it was after the blue one. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. was after the Anyway, blue one. that was a real, in yes. fact, this is my favorite cigar that Big Sky's made. Okay, I by, can see that. I can see that. By yeah. far. I can see that. By far. And then I'm going back to one of my new go-tos. Go-tos. The McAuliffe Wait a Experiencia. Minute. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Not not the medallion. I know because you said one of my new go-tos. New, yeah. You say McAuliffe. You're like, yeah, that's not new. <laughs> I said Experiencia. Excuse me. The yes. Herencia, Herencia Habano. Dude, yes. I am loving that yes. cigar. That Habano is a great stick. I, I am a huge fan of that. Yes. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, it's given the McAuliffe medallia a run for its money as far as my go-to man folks are dropping dead dude that statement dude All dude we hear is medallia, no 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 medallia. you I'm, talking about another stick i'm telling you right now that is giving a run for the money wow. on the medallia the habano wow that's all I can say. Hey, uh, to put it up there with the medallia. For for you, you yes. I'm going to tell you right now. If you haven't tried the Herencia Habano, you need to try one. It will not be I have, so I know off. it's a good stick. But those that haven't, he's telling you the truth. You need to try it. You yeah, really do. It really, it, you know what? Here's what I like about it. It's, it's full body. Mm-hmm. It's got a lot of flavor, a lot of complexity. But the difference between that cigar and the medallia is for me the medallia has a little more sweetness to it Mm -hmm. the cocoa the sweetness to where the habano has more of the spice it takes you back to your beginnings yeah it really does that hit that pop that pop i it's a good stick it's been lights out awesome it's a good stick so anyway that is the pick six we will have luke put those in the show notes Mm -hmm of uh the youtube channel so if you want to go by the youtube channel you'll be able to see the pick six this week and definitely give them a try i mean i've I've lifted off three cigars that have not been on my pick three before true so even though you scared us with mccallough we just knew you thought i was going with another m was coming you you thought i was going with that i get that so What's up? Oh, whoa. Almost a party foul, but I saved it. You see that? You can tell the truth. That larceny there. <laughs> and they will not waste a drop hey, of alcohol. That was, that was skill. Did you see that? Did you see that, Larry? Thank you. That, I mean, dude, I ain't no rookie. That's the wheel to survive. He was like, it can't. It can't. Dude, I knocked this glass yeah. over, and before it spilled. Yeah, I saw it. Phew, I noticed. I was like Flash. <laughs> Fat Flash. <laughs> you know what? I'm done. Pull the plug. Show's over. Show's over. I'm leaving. Luke said he'll feel it. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Man, I love it. I love it. Hey, I brought, you, I brought you into this world. I'll take you out. I love it, man. I love it. We're going to talk now about three things you miss from the 80s and 90s. 
Now that that is a period for us. It was teenage coming into, you know, our 20s. So there were things that were going on that were still a part of our molding. <laughs> so, uh, you know, think back. Here's think the funny back. thing is, whatever we name, uh, Luke doesn't even know about. No, nah, he don't. He, he was born in, do you know yeah. he was born in 2000? January. January wow. 10th of 2000. Wow. He's a, he's a millennial. Not, 100%. Not, not a millennial. Millennium. Him, yeah. He was born on a the millennium. New millennium. Baby. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And he was born January tenth. So that's o one one o o o. So anyway, he doesn't know about what we're fixed to talk about. Nope. So I'll tell you right now, and and, and I don't miss much out of the nineties. Uh-huh. I'm more of the eighties. Okay. I really enjoyed the eighties. Okay. You know, the great thing, first of all is the music the music now wait yeah. a minute now let me let me cl- let me clarify that when i was in the 80s though i was listening to a lot of rock and roll yeah. from the 70s yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean but it was your time so it was not like yeah you know, no no i wasn't going back no, in no, time no, that uh, stuff uh, was still yeah, popular it was your time when yeah. you were listening to led zeppelin Most in the 80s definitely. it was yes. still relevant yes and yes. I mean, it's what they played on the radio. Mm-hmm. KC ninety five, baby. FMX ninety four point five, baby. <laughs> Man, so uh, so that's that's one of the things that I miss. And and I'll tell you this, like I don't miss the music that was made in the late ninety or the late eighties. Like when you look at Van Halen, when you look at poison when you look at all those hair bands yeah. you didn't I, like the hair bands i did at the time uh, but now but now when i go back and listen to it i'm like it's so cheesy not to ben halen not to me yeah white snake you know those those other groups you taking. yeah i can see the cheeses but halen nah, no no even halen for from me. diamond dave all the way now through, don't man. Dude, dude let me tell you something I was the biggest Diamond Dave fan you ever saw. <laughs> I mean, I told you, mm-hmm. when you went into my yeah. bedroom, you could not see the wall because I had either pictures from magazines or posters on the wall, and oh, you could not see the wall. Yeah. It was all guitar players, singers, the whole nine yards. But when I go back and think about what it was really just genuine, awesome music you can stay with the of 70s. the 80s, well, even of the 80s, I mean, I'm looking at more at like bands of like Iron Maiden, Ozzy so went, Osbourne, you metal. Well, you know what? It's, it was metal of the time, mm-hmm. but when you listen to it now, it oh, doesn't yeah, sound yeah, like metal yeah, no, at no, all. No, it sounds that, like music. Yeah, because that is transitioned totally too. Right. Yeah. So, give me something that I mean now from the '80s. Yeah, the end of the '80s to the beginning of the '90s. What I really missed was wearing pro jerseys. We wore every pro jersey. I, I had. Every pro jersey almost there was. Football, baseball. I didn't wear basketball because I, I didn't like wearing tank tops all the time. But <laughs> I figured you'd be wearing crop tops. I'm not Ezekiel Letting your Elliott. boobs hang I'm out. I'm not Ezekiel Elliott. I got you. And at, during the Dude. 80s and 90s, I didn't have boobs because I was still a you football player. Yeah. yeah. Back then you had pecs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had things that attracted women. Not I had, put, not I had them. Yeah, I forgot. I did have pecs at one time. <laughs> I used to have pecs. <laughs> yeah, I used to have. <laughs> yeah, so it was just, you know. Now I'm a B cup. <laughs> it, was, it was everybody that I knew we had. Football jerseys, baseball jerseys, and we wore these sweatshirts that were IOU sweatshirts. Now, see, we didn't really wear jerseys. <laughs> Dude, I mean, there was wore. the occasional guy that uh, wore a jersey, but uh, it was not our thing. The end of it for me was when FUBU came out with the jerseys, the football jerseys. I was like, see, we, nah, bro, I can't put that on. Yeah, we <laughs> we wore that. we wore mostly like Cowboys concert. Uh, no, no, concert oh, now, t-shirts. I had a lot of friends that were the black concert t-shirt was. now you also have to remember that whenever i was in high school i had like hair down to here yeah, yeah we saw that picture yeah and so <laughs> you know we, we were the rock and roll thugs we were some of the last ones that wore cummerbunds to our proms i wore a cummerbund As i said we yeah. were some of the last ones to wear yeah. cummerbunds to you our saw proms. my pink tuxedo yeah bro come on now i was i was hitting it yeah, you was hitting something. <laughs> I don't know if it was it, but you was hitting something. Yeah, so I I would say the music, 
you know, it was the end of an era. Going into the 90s, now don't get me wrong, now that I listen to some of the more of the 90s music, uh-huh. I dig some of it. Yeah. Uh, some Soundgarden, some Alice Chain, some STP, mm-hmm. you know, those bands was doing some good music. Gotcha. What I didn't like about that era of music, though, you didn't have the quality guitar soloist. No. You know every, what I mean? Because everybody had didn't didn't hone their craft like with you know rest in peace to mr van halen you had guys that honed their crafts with that 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 stick they took pride they sat back for hours and hours and hours and did things that people didn't think could be done with a guitar you know they they hit riffs and they would hit chords they're like how did his fingers do that well it takes time you see what i'm saying oh and it takes time yeah and they took the time to master but that. like when i think of like guitarists i think of like jimmy page mm-hmm. randy rhodes mm-hmm. oh, yeah. uh david gilmore mm-hmm. from pink floyd yeah. you know those guys took the guitar to, to and, another and, level. and they had their own style because oh, yes. you that could tell nobody could you could, duplicate you and it, here's the thing that i loved about them they could take someone else's music and still be on the guitar, and you could tell that that was Randy Rose doing that. Right. It wasn't his music, but you could tell by his his uh, his finger the, the way he did it. Well, and then how many people copied Randy Rose? Oh shit! Almost everybody. You know that he, <laughs> and you know I don't know if you know this, but Ozzy Ars, Ozzy Osbourne had Randy Rhodes. Mm-hmm. Did you know that after Randy Rhodes died? Ozzy Osbourne said, "I'll never have yeah, a nice, single guitar yeah. player again," yeah. and that's why every tour he had a new, new guitarist mm-hmm. because he was he knew he could never have another randy Rhodes. That, could, that could top him nope he knew it yep i'm with you i know so, so anyway i guess the other thing is you know i didn't realize at the time but the cars oh the cars of that time but and here's, again, no, 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 wait, a minute, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute before you go anywhere the same with the music with the same with the cars because the cars from the 60s and 70s were still cool yes. and uh, cheaply yes. and cheaply yes. available in yes. the 80s. Yes. Yes. I had a 72 Chevelle as a sophomore in high school. In high school. Yeah, I never made it to a sophomore <laughs> college, so <laughs> there's no confusion there. So, but anyway, I had a 72 Chevelle. We paid $2200 for a perfectly yeah non-molested 72 chevelle and you know at the time i thought this was an older car Mm -hmm. but it wasn't well i mean it was like 14 years old it wasn't right yeah i mean now that you look and you're like wow 72 chevelle now it's like Mm -hmm. what 40 years old yep boom and try to get one for 2000 $200, you might be able to get a set of wheels. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. If you do, you'd rob somebody. Right. And that's just the mindset. Mine went to, and he, I'm a product. So I know you had an IROC. You yes. had a Mustang. Yes. And which were in the 80s. 86, both of them. Yeah. Both of them. So, I mean, and you know, I had a good friend that had an 86 or 87 IROC. Phenomenal yes. cars for their time. Yes. I mean, it's still a phenomenal car now, but, but you'd have to tune, do a lot of tuning but, to but, it. But when you got into the 80s, you no longer had the big blocks. No. no, no you know no, what I mean? No. Those were gone. See, because the IROCs, uh, the 86 was a 305, which right. was a 5.0. And then you went to 80, 87, 88, and then 89, so went back to the 5.7s, which is the 350s. Right. But the uh, the Mustang I had was a, a SVO, which folks were like, oh, man, that's just a four-cylinder. That's why I only race you in a quarter. Because but it had the turbo. Yes, because in the quarter you wasn't gonna catch me. Right. I wouldn't race anybody longer than a quarter. Now, well, who was racing longer than you quarters? Had folks that are like, oh man, let's go a mile. No, dude, dude what? a mile. For what? That also, is not so, a race. So your, so your top end can kick in and you can walk me down. Nah, bro. No, the mile. It needs to be quick. <laughs> Nobody races a mile. Dude, they did. I know, but that they was did. just that's, that's it, it was it was crazy, man. And you know with. That Mustang, bruh, in a quarter, you couldn't do. I had a friend that bought an 89, brand new. He changed the headers. He put new gears in the rear, a short shifter, because mine already had the short shifter. He put the pit bull chip in there. 
he was running hard after a quarter mile. Right. <laughs> after a quarter mile. Let me tell you this. This blew me away. Mm-hmm. A good friend of mine bought a brand new GMC pickup last year, mm-hmm. and it is the top of the line. All the bells and whistles. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much it costs because I'm poor. <laughs> but stock, yeah. it runs a 12 3 5 oh, yeah. quarter. Mm-hmm. Dude, a 12 3. Dude, we didn't know what 12.3 second quarters were back nope. in the 80s. Nope. We thought 13, 14, and 15, somewhere, somewhere in there. there. You yeah. had a hot car. Yeah. A brand new truck and that runs a, a twelve three. You're talking about a pickup, which that's is light, crazy. Lighting it behind, so it's you got to keep it on the ground, dude. Yeah, bro. It's, it's it's you it's, know it, today's technology with vehicles oh, blows away man, what we come had. On, come on, but my son, the has, carburetor, the <sighs> headers, you know, and we could do our own things. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could work on your car. Yep. You can't work on your nope. car anymore. Those days are over. <laughs> you have to take it to somebody now. Right. I mean, if you can work on a car now, you have a NASA rocket engineer degree. Yeah. My son, he has that, uh, was it a 2018 uh, scat back, the Charger scat back? Mm-hmm. That's a hard running car. But like I told him, I was like, I come out with an EMP. <laughs> You sitting still. But guess what my iRock would do? <laughs> right. Keep running, baby. It's just it's hey. all technology, man. We went in there. He he, he bought this uh, oil cleaner to put in there. Because evidently, with those Hemis, they get uh, shavings in there every once in a while. So we had to put an oil cleaner on there. You mean in the oil pan? Mm-hmm. And, but this goes up from the, it goes from the receiver to something else. It's, it's under the hood. Right up on top of the block. When he popped the hood or anything, I was like, man, I ain't messing with this. He said, oh, Dad, I looked at YouTube. I said, yeah, you can do it. That's your car. <laughs> I'm not touching this, man. Yeah, for sure. Dude. So, hey, there is a YouTube channel that I've become a big fan of, and I'll I'll see if I can find it right quick. But it is actually a car lot. I want to say the car lot is in Alabama. But they only sell like classic muscle cars. Uh-huh. And they do a phenomenal job. Every car they come in, they do a complete walk around mm-hmm. talking about it. And they show you every defect or imperfection they can find mm-hmm. on the car. And then they give you a ride along. And then they do some peel outs and yeah. show you what it can do. And their cars are actually affordable. Yeah. yeah. And what, when I say affordable, that doesn't mean I can afford one because I got kids. Yeah. You know, I got a 20 year old son and I got a 19 year old daughter in Australia. I'm broke. But anyway, uh, you can pick up a nice 60s or 70s car anywhere from like 14 to 30. Yeah, that's cool. That's not that, outrageous. No, it isn't. And the other day they had a, I want to say a 67 Cornette that looks like a GT, a GTX. Yes. And it had, I want to say it had a 386, something like that. 383. That's right. Big Dick Larry over there. He knows. <laughs> he knows. So anyway, I mean, and it was priced at like 22, mm. which was, phenomenal Ooh. at a price yes. and then when they did the walk around he showed some like imperfections mm-hmm. but i mean as far as a daily driver Bruh, i don't do i don't i never want a show car nah. you know what i mean that i gotta be able to drive it. that is not my thing and so yeah i want to be able to drive it i want to be able to enjoy it and if you got a show car there's no way that you can you know enjoy it you can't get the insurance to enjoy it right because it's only parades and I've got a I've got a very good friend who's retired that has a '66 Chevelle with a 396 in it, mm-hmm. and he had a special package put in. It's got about 700 horsepower, mm-hmm. and he brought it up to work one day, and <laughs> I was just drooling. Uh-huh. It's it's canary yellow with the uh, chrome head scoops on the gotcha. side, and then he's got the black vinyl top super looking good 66 Chevelle Mm -hmm. and I'm drooling over it. And he tosses me the keys like, take it for a drive, man. And I was like, 
no nah, man I, I i can't drive this and he was like no serious that's no. take it dude i took that for a drive first of all i was nervous but second of all let me tell you you know how hard it is to get traction on a 700 horsepower yes. motor i was like dude and what tires did he have on the street tires he had street yeah, tires on it get traction with but that, dude man. let me tell you something cruising around by myself in that 66 <laughs> took you back to oh uh, it year. did it did <laughs> you know what was nice no music that motor just listen was all it. the music listen I needed. Listening to that and the road is the most. Yeah. That's the greatest music ever, man. I didn't need no tunes. All right, what's our next subject? I, we didn't even finish that one. Oh. <laughs> See? <laughs> the next one for me that I missed because I was an Army brat. My dad was uh, he was in Vietnam and everything. So we, I did not know that. Yeah, he got, he, he got shot over there. He bled out. He actually died. They brought him back. And then they had to fuse his his kneecap. Now, were you born before or after? Before. Before. Before, okay. He got shot in 73. Oh, wow. So he was there at the end. Yeah. And uh, he came back and- uh, Now, was he in the Army? He was in the Army, yeah. And all all I hung out with were uh, kids that were brats, Army brats, Army or Air Force brats. Right. Because Scott Air Force Brace was right. That's the way it was, yeah. So we used to get a lot of stuff that I remember from the 80s and- we warm in high school. They were Korean sweatsuits because they were made in Korea. The service all right, well, over, first the of all, over Korean there. sweatsuits. I got to Google that yeah. because I don't know what that is. You could get it any way you wanted it, bro, because it was the service members that were in Korea. They go to them shops. I need a sweatsuit for my son. I need a sweatsuit for my nephew. I want this on it. I want that on it. And you talking about some extravagant sweatsuits we wore, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so were they like all crazy, dude? You talking about embroidery across the entire thing? You got you got eagles eagles wings on the back, <laughs> your picture on the front, you know, your name going down one leg. I'm talking about it. It's all stitched. You know what I'm saying? Something that you if you bought here, you'd pay like three four hundred dollars for. He was getting it over there for what? A bag of rice and a. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was it was just cheaper over there. But they sent you you sit there and wait on your friends and stuff, man. And you'd be like, I got a box coming. Where? For so they look kind of some, some, somewhat like it, somewhat like it. So, let me show that to everybody. Somewhat, but they were uh, it's not it's not the because that's just material. These this this was embroidered. They would embroider. So is that like like the fighters yes, like had, that yes, came in? I yes. remember that they had like lions and tigers and stuff embroidered. When I, when I went across and became a mason my dad had a friend of his sent to korea to get Cold. my jacket yeah, anyway to get my jacket and the jacket that they sent to me i was like oh my god and he said you know where i got it? i said yeah i'm looking i know where this came from <laughs> it's straight out of korea he's like yeah it's just the way they do things over there because you know you know, Dude, let me it's tell just, you this. It's let weird. You, it's, let it's, me let me tell you this. Before you got here, uh -huh. I was out here. This is funny. I was watching the Cowboy game, and I told you I watched five, ten minutes, turned it off. Yeah. I went to YouTube, and I watched a woman from uh, some small third world country that was, uh, anyway, I can't remember. But anyway, she built an underground house by herself like digging a hole down in the earth chiseling out a full kitchen like a stove and a bed and then the roof and bamboo yeah, and plants yeah. it was just crazy and the whole time i was thinking about it i was watching this going big larry needs to go over there man <laughs> that's where you can find a wife big larry <laughs> I mean, a woman who builds a house, she cooked a fish, had boiled the water. Yeah, it was like the primal building of stuff. But this woman took it to a level I've never seen before. Yeah, that's what it was. It was on there. Yeah, it was it was it was amazing, dude. This house, and I'm gonna guess it was probably a thousand square feet. Yeah, dude, it was freak. I mean, she planted plants, she painted, 
she used stucco techniques <laughs> barehanded. I was like, if I wasn't married, <laughs> man, I'd find that woman, bring her back to the States. <laughs> Larry's on his way. He's on his way now. And dude, I never seen that before. Oh, yeah, I seen it, dude. I talked because it's like you said. I watched those YouTube channels. I saw one, two dudes, two young guys. They went and straight just took the earth and dug and dug in and dug. Pass me like, that glass. I just want to look at it. I want to look at it. I want to, I want to see. And dug them a two bedroom apartment that they made with a swimming pool. You do it if you don't give me that glass, man. You starting to act like Larry for real. <laughs> hey, I could have kept both of them. I know. One. I know. But it's just those Korean sweatsuits were a style for us because, you know, it was the beginning. Oh, we're back on yeah, that. Because it was the beginning of hip hop and everybody wanted to jump in Adidas sweatsuits and everything. Ours was just like different. Do you yeah. remember the 90s got ruined by, by you know, <laughs> hammer time? <laughs> you say parachute pants. <laughs> no, no. I wore parachute pants in Dude, the 80s. I never did. I never wore parachute pants. <laughs> I was I never. I was poor and white. I, I, it didn't matter. I was poor. We thought. We thought. We thought. We thought that was cool, bro. You know where I used you to know shop, what's cool for us? dude. You know where I? The name of the store at the mall was called Chess King. <laughs> Larry shaking his head. Yeah, I know where that is. <laughs> you remember Chess King? Dude, dude Chess King had like parachute pants and. Every color, nah, nah, bro. Every color. We were Levi's and Dickies. I had, I had, you know, I, I can't Levi's even, I can't even say sport coat because it was more like a yuppie. You were going to church if you wore a sport coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was not, it was not for that. In fact, I remember going to Chess King whenever I graduated high school, and I used to go to bars when I was nineteen, and I bought a shirt that looked like a puffy pirate shirt. It had all these. <laughs> Like ruffles in the front. It had these giant big sleeves that would fit Lou Ferrigno. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, he wore a blouse. It, it, <laughs> I did. It, it was a blouse, but I also had black pants and these black cowboy boots, black cowboy boots with the pointed toe with the silver metal tips. Come on, man. No. And I used you to go. You just destroyed your, you just destroyed my. Hey, hey. And I'm, I'm looking. We went to a club called The Planet. It was, it was, it was techno. It was, it was, you know what? I was finding myself. No, you, you were trying to follow <laughs> Patrick Swayze. <laughs> he was Roadhouse. I was Roadhouse. <laughs> you know what? Dude. And no. I don't miss those days. No, I, I, I miss don't the Swiss, miss but days. I promise you, I don't miss your days. <laughs> My last one was, and we were talking about it earlier. Oh, you got earlier. another one? They said three things. Oh. And we were talking about it earlier. I want me another boom box, man. Oh, yeah. We were looking at boom boxes. And you guys, me. let me tell you Dude. something. Before Brian came over today, I had no idea. If you want to buy a retro boom yes. box from the 80s and it's in good working condition, you're talking $700, $800. So and if you got a boom box tucked away in your closet, you email me because Brian yes. is on the hunt. And the thing is, most of those at seven, dollars $800 are not in good working condition. They're not. I'm trying to help you out, I bro. Pr I pray, I pray that they because man, they had a late Sonic Brian, one that was like three thousand dollars. Because Brian's got two hundred bucks. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what Brian's got. That's my that's my budget. <laughs> that is my budget. I Thank found you. I found him a couple of wooden sticks and a speaker <laughs> for two hundred bucks. So anyway, so you know. You know I love retro, yeah, and I love vintage. Our stereo system here in the studio is a DBX system from 1984. We got Sirwin Vega speakers with a 15 inch sub. Man. I mean, we can rock out. The thing is, when I got to, but you can't take to, it anywhere. No, you can't. When I got <laughs> true, when I got the permanent party at Fort Lewis, the first thing I bought me was a stereo. I went and got a Marantz receiver. And I love Morant. And I got a Morant double seat, uh, double uh, cassette uh, a player. And I had a partner that had just got back from Germany. And he sold me two Sirwin Vegas for $400. Bargain. It was a bargain. All day long. You don't want to know what I paid for this system. Dude, when I say you turn that sucker on four. Do you, have I then, told you what I paid for this? No. Nah. I shouldn't tell everybody. <laughs> I didn't pay a dime. I made a trade. 
Oh, yeah, I remember when you was doing I trade traded stuff. three. No, I traded one SKS rifle mm. and two AK-47s. For that? For that stereo and those Sirwin Vega speakers. That's, that's about a $3,000 system. I was just going to say, that's about $3,000. Yeah, that's, that's what I traded for that stereo system. Wow. But the guy that I got it from got it from an Air Force guy yeah. that he had bought that system in 1984. And still had it. Not just Working. still had it. No, it was still new in the box. Ooh. The Air Force guy, Air Force guy, had brought it to a uh, storage unit, brand new in the box, and left it in there until 2010. Wow. The guy that I got it from bought it from him, and he had it for six years, yeah. and then I got it from him. Wow! But yeah, so basically, it's a brand new, new unit. System, well, yeah. ten years old now. But DBX, I don't know if you know DBX. I do. They go back, back and yes. they were the shit. Them, Morant, freaking uh, Panas- people. People talk about Panasonic now, but Panasonic had a run. Man. See, I think I I, I would have gone with no. I don't. I think Panasonic you're thinking of Pioneer. Run. No, yeah, Pioneer. Yeah, Pioneer, Pan- Pioneer. Panasonic sucked. Yeah, Pioneer. I, I was Pioneer, fixing to slap you. JVC, <sighs> dude. Ah. Back in my day, I told you I had a Sony stereo, yeah. and even Sony was still is. Sony was your poor man's best student, yeah. your best stereo. And the thing was, it it elevated itself past that to the point where people were spending major bucks for Sony, oh yeah Sony equipment, man. You know, I talked to a guy who does professional audio, uh-huh. and you know what he says? The biggest. I don't, don't want to offend anyone out there that's a big <laughs> fan. But he said, you know what the biggest scam of American audio is? Bose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows that. It's okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, everybody I, knows Because, you know, he is like a prof- – he, he installs stereo systems into multi-million dollar mm-hmm. people's homes. Yeah. And I was like, so what about Bose? And he busted out laughing. Yeah. He was like, Bose sucks, it man. Does, man. And I was like, Really? I thought Bose was good because yeah, it's so overpriced. Yeah, because they, they play it up that way. Right. So I didn't I didn't know that. I take a blah punk over a Bose. A blah punk? Yeah. What's that? In every Volkswagen Porsche <laughs> and Audi. <Okay. laughs> got gotcha. you. In every Volkswagen Porsche and Audi is a blah punk, baby. All right. So let's get on to the next topic. Next topic. Whoa. What? We're at an hour. Yeah, that's a good conversation. Okay. All right. Like I guess we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. And don't forget, guys, if you made it this far in the show, you might be one of the few that remember. Yes. Take a photo with a Viva La Vida, mm-hmm. con- no, no, contact, tag, mm-hmm. Cigar Talk Rob, Cigar Talk Bryant, and Artisanal yes. Tobacco, and we're going to randomly select one of those photos from Instagrams before episode 106, mm-hmm. and you win our Cigar Talk uh, swag, which is a travel humidor. And a little bit more that we're not going to tell you. Yeah, that's going to be a little something, something. And as we say, once you get it, please take a picture of it, send it to us on Instagram so we can, you know, it's about letting people know that we're true about this. Yeah. We're not like some others that say things and don't do it. Like Cigar Pulpit. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm totally messing with people. You know, we love Cigar dude, Pulpit. Dude, you just threw them out there like, dude, that, that bus know. is still running. Dude. <laughs> Those tracks are still Hold pressed. on. Let me throw it in reverse. Yes. <laughs> like the good cigar. <laughs> oh, no, wait, 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 wait. All right. Let's it's do it. time. Let's do are it. you ready? Yes. We're not even going to tell everybody what we're doing. We're just going to do it. Happy Be trails to... No, oh, no, no, that's the wrong trails, song. Yeah. Wrong song. Wrong First song. word, right. Second right. word, All right. I'm going to let you do the honors. No, nah, man, I can't sing anymore. Oh, Honey, shoot, man. You sound Happy like... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the best part of the good cigar, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> we are big fans of you yes. and not so much of your husband. <laughs> But we love you, and we love your show. And so happy birthday, happy man. birthday, Melissa. Take care, and until next time, keep smoking. Boom.